Hey guys, today I have a little secret to share with you. So I've already shown you how to use the Viral Launch web app to find profitable potential products for Amazon FBA, but today I'm gonna to show you how to ethically steal other Amazon sellers' products and use the Amazon new release technique to find products that nobody else is looking at. Uh, I've found half of my products using these techniques. It's extremely powerful and I'm really excited to share it with you today, but you have to promise you're not gonna share it with anybody else, okay? So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. The first thing that you're gonna wanna do is go to Google and type in Amazon best sellers and click on the first link that you see and you'll get to a page that looks like this. And essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna look through the Amazon best sellers, new releases, most wished for and gift ideas tabs to find potential Amazon FBA products using the Viral Launch Chrome extension. So for this, you don't need the uh, Viral Launch web app, you just need the Chrome extension. If you don't already have it, uh, I've included a link below for a coupon for 30% off your first month or 10% off your first year. So I just wanna let you know that, I've included that below. If you already have Jungle Scout, which is kind of Viral Launch's biggest competitor and a very similar service, um, if you already have like an annual subscription with them, that's fine. You can still do the same research using the Jungle Scout Chrome extension. Again, I personally use and recommend Viral Launch. Um, there are less people using Viral Launch, uh, particularly for the web app. You can see products other, a lot of other sellers aren't looking at. And I find that the numbers are more accurate with Viral Launch. And again, that's just in my research, in my opinion. That's why I prefer Viral Launch over Jungle Scout. But again, not a huge deal if you've already signed up and you're already paying for Jungle Scout. But if you haven't already, like I said, I've included a link below for um, a percent off. I think we yeah, got 30% off first month, 10% off your first year. So just want to let you know that um, that's what you'll need to get set up. And that's it. Uh, that and internet access, of course. So go ahead and get the Chrome extension. Install it. Uh, and make sure the icon's up here. And once you've done that, we're ready to kind of get into it. So what we're going to do, like I said, is we're gonna go on the left-hand side here under certain categories, and I'll name these categories in a second, and basically keep clicking into categories and digging in until we find uh, our middle search results here start looking like potential FBA products. And what I mean by that is, when I say FBA products, or when you're looking to, for potential products to sell through Amazon FBA, at least with a strategy that I use, you do not want to look for products that are already being sold in Target, Walmart, or if you can envision it being sold in Target or Walmart, like honestly, I can see all of these being sold in a Target or Walmart. Those are products you want to avoid, okay? They're good products, just not for us. So that's just one kind of rule of thumb, and I'll show you some other product criteria and get very give you very specific numbers on what makes a product good or bad and show you real examples, okay? So you're just stay tuned for that. Uh, so... In these departments, here's what I recommend, um, the departments I recommend clicking into and not clicking into. So I'll just start and go through the ones that I recommend. So we'll go through, uh, start with automotive is good. Baby, beauty and personal care. Clothing, shoes and jewelry can be good. Um, it's kind of hit, hit or miss, but this can be good. Handmade products can be good. Health and household's good. Home and kitchen is good. Industrial and scientific is good. Kitchen and dining is good. Musical instruments can be interesting. That, that can be good. If you're, and especially if you have any background in music. And also, if you have any background in anything specific, not just like, oh, I'm a girl, so I like makeup. And that's just an assumption. I'm not assuming you like makeup. Uh, or if you're a guy, like sports, right? Two stereotypes. Um, I, that's not what I mean. But if you like, you know, are very, if you're a music teacher, if you're, if you play an instrument well, um, you know, click into things like this, you know, you know, maybe focus on that category because you have more insight and um, than, than the rest of our sellers. So you actually have a competitive advantage in that regard. So that's just one point I wanted to make. Um, but still, if you don't have any musical uh, experience or knowledge or aptitude, that's still fine. Musical instruments can be good. Office products can be good. Patio lawn and garden can be good. Although a lot of times you'll find seasonal products. And generally, you want to find products that sell well all year round, not just for a few months. Pet supplies is good. Uh, sports and outdoors can be good. Sports and collectibles can be good. Um, tools and home improvement can also be good. And then lastly, toys and games is good. Okay, so I said the word good like 20 times, but uh, those are good uh, departments to look into, if you, especially if you're starting off on um, Amazon FBA. So go ahead and click into one of those. For this, I'm just going to go to... Let's do, let's do home and kitchen. That'll be interesting. So we'll get ahead, uh, click into home and kitchen. Like I said, we're gonna keep clicking into categories and kind of subcategories on the left-hand side 
until the results in the middle of the page look like weird niche products, right? Not name brand, not um, things that you could find in, uh, in Walmart or Target, right? Like all of these options. So we need to keep clicking in because these are very generic um, uh, brands or very, very, you know, well-known brands and also generic products. Okay, so let's do home decor. I'm just clicking into the middle here. <laughs> so home decor, let's see the results that that shows us. I, guess, I assume it's still gonna be a little bit too competitive. And yes, I can see like this um, popular product, which isn't a good thing. You don't wanna go after a super popular product, just pro popular to a very specific group of people. Um, so this is still pretty broad. Getting As you can see, it's getting a little bit more narrow, a little less generic, a little bit less brand, um, a little fewer brand names. And we're gonna kinda keep, oh, this is interesting. So again, just go, I just keep clicking on the middle here, but indoor fountains and accessories. That looks interesting. That's weird and niche, right? Think of those two words uh, as you're looking through your research. Weird and niche, those are the type of products you wanna go after. And I'm not seeing a lot of fountains. I'm seeing a lot of, so these are good examples or could potential examples of FBA products. Don't just go and write this down like, oh, this is a good product. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is from what I'm seeing here, this is definitely weird um, and that's a good thing. Weird and niche. Uh, this also though looks like it could be heavy. You don't want to sell anything over two pounds um, just because with the fees associated and shipping costs, that's just going to be more expensive for you. And since these are more, and again, I don't know the size of these or anything. I'd have to check into the weight, but there's potentially could be pretty heavy, but again, weird and niche. Um, and the reason I'm not clicking on anything yet is because of the review count. I already see two, tw 255, 200, 779, uh, 238. That just looks super weird. Uh, but which is fine. I don't, if, if you like that kind of stuff, I'm not, you know, I hope I'm not offending you at all, but, um, yeah, it looks like it could be a little bit heavy, but then also I see a lot of reviews for a lot of these things. So I might've passed it something I thought was interesting. Let's see. So that's just kind of why I'm skipping over. It's very interesting, very interesting category for sure. So I'm just going to kind of keep scrolling through. It still looks a little bit competitive. So I might click on, I might click one more in to indoor fountain accessories. And again, it's pretty much showing me kind of the same, showing me some very similar results. Okay, so as I'm scrolling through here on page two, this looks kind of interesting here. These Nanette air humidifiers, 46. This is a great example of a weird niche product. Um, I can already tell, or my assumption is that this is a Chinese uh, seller based on the uh, this two pack here. This is notorious for a lot of Chinese sellers. We'll put this um, two pack or whatever um, um, image in, or kind of logo or whatever this is called in their main image. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and open this in a new tab. Man, I was just really fascinated by all these stones. I'm sorry. Uh, very interesting category. And what we do is we don't really care about the, this product specifically. We care about the category. So what we'll do is we'll try to extract some keywords and basically find like what keyword could we type into Amazon to where this type of product would appear. So we're going to go up here and, and select all departments. So it was originally home and kitchen. We're going to go to all departments. And it looks like Let's see, cool mist, diffusers for bedrooms, decorative ceramic with natural water. So natural, okay. So natural stone, um, was it hum, humidifiers? Okay, natural stone humidifiers. And let's see if this type of product shows up. Okay. So we get past the sponsor. We don't really care about the sponsored. Okay. All right, yep. So as we can see, um, this, is, this is good uh, in, so far. So this is what we kind of want to see uh, when we type in a keyword, we see a, you know pretty much the same product listed multiple times. And as you can see, not a lot of differentiation. There's a big, there's this kind of like big stone here and a little one. Um, so very interesting. This is definitely a weird niche product. So what we're going to do is once we get to a page like this, that we have a collection of very similar search results or very similar products, we're going to run the viral launch Chrome extension. So you go up to the right hand corner and click on um, viral launch Chrome extension. And now I'm going to show you what, what good, if this is a good or bad product and why, okay. To where instead of just giving you a fish, instead of just giving you a good product, like, Oh, Hey, go sell this product. Number one, if I did that, a, you know, 
however many people watching this would just go and flock and, and, and launch a, a business around this product. And it would, if it wasn't already competitive, it would soon become competitive. And number two, you know, I want to teach you how to do this process rather than just giving it to you. Kind of like, in a way, I guess it's kind of stupid, but uh, teaching you how to fish instead of just giving you the fish. But um, anyway, first thing you want to do is um, sort uh, in descending order from highest revenue to lowest. That's the first thing you want to do because uh, Viral Launch Chrome extension automatically defaults to page rank. So, you know, if it'll, it'll rank, you know, first on the page, second, third, fourth, and so on. Uh, and a lot of times, like in this case, the, the, the seller who is ranked 15th on the first page is selling uh, the most, okay? Although they're selling the most, but it's not very good. So here's what you want to pay attention to. Let me make sense of all this noise for you. The only three categories that matter at all, in my opinion, are monthly revenue, price, and review quantity, at least in this stage. That's the only thing you really need to look at. So monthly revenue, price, and review quantity. Here's what makes a product good or bad. So there's so much confusion about this. And like, I don't know why no other Amazon FBA guru or whatever tells you this. I guess because they want you to buy their course and then they'll tell you, but I'm perfectly fine telling as many people as possible. This is my exact strategy, my exact numbers. All right, what I do, what I look for when I'm gonna launch a product, the top four competitors by revenue need to be making at least $8,000 or more a month. That's my criteria. So the top four sellers make $8,000 or more a month. Number two, the price point needs to be overall, right? The average price point needs to be above $13, really above 12, but the further above $12, the better. So 13 or more, the average price point needs to be. So, so far we have an X over here. Um, there's just not enough demand, not enough people purchasing this type of product. So it's a little bit too niche of a product is what this data is telling me. For the price point, um, price point's good overall. We have a, kind of an outlier over here, but overall, um, and another one over here, higher price point, especially for the top sellers. And we go over the review quantity. The criteria for review quantity, the top four sellers take, the, so average these reviews, okay? So like, you know, add them to, you know, take the sum and then divide by four. That number should be less than 100. If it's over 100, that means it's too competitive. And again, this is my criteria, my opinion. I've done a ton of research into this. I've launched several products on Amazon with success uh, and actually a couple with, with failures that I, that I talk about in other videos. But, um, but I've learned from my mistakes and I do not recommend if, if, you t if you take the average of the top four competitors and the review quantity is above 100, don't go for it. So unfortunately, and again, this is a demo, uh, with this product, uh, the, the, there's, not, there's too much competition. So these two sellers here, you know, 419, 247, it'd be very difficult to compete against them and they're not making enough money. So actually this is a really crappy product um, and that's why it's getting a one star review here. But it looked interesting from the outside and it's all kind of a learning process, okay? So this is basically what you're gonna do. So you're, and you, you'll, you're, most of the products you look at aren't gonna be an instant success like a lot of people tell you. It will take you a few hours for one of my products, it took me as low as three hours. For another one of my products, it took me seven hours of product research. But when you look at it in the long run, that could seem like a long time. Um, and I think for another product, it took me even longer. Um, but I'm fairly efficient. I've been doing this for enough time to where I, you know, I can find products uh, pretty efficiently. But when it's your first time, it's going to take some time. But you got to think about the long term. It is absolutely going to pay off even if it took you 20 hours or 40 hours to find a product, it's, it's, you have to think about the long term and all your time in, because your time is money. So all the money in and all the money out, uh, if you do this right and do this uh, by the way that I teach in my, in my course and in my, on my channel, you, like, you will get a huge ROI from any time and money that you spend on the front end. In my opinion, Amazon FBA is the best way in 2019 and on to generate passive income. Uh, more than any other kind of drop shipping, more than real estate, more than, um, in my opinion, more than any any other, you know, cryptocurrency, anything else, right? So anyway, uh, done with my monologue. It will take you a little bit of time. Just want to let you know that up front. Want to be very honest with you about that. Uh, but if you're worried about time, just, you know, look at the, look, like list out everything you have to do in a day, like everything, you know, that you have to do in a day uh, on a, and then rank it from the most important to the least important. Look at the seventh thing that you've written um, on your list and replace that with product research, okay? So if that's 
20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, an hour a day, two hours a day, whatever you can afford in product research, it's gonna definitely pay off. And it may seem like really, really stressful up front, but it's honestly not gonna take you a lot of time when, like I said, you replace that seventh thing that you do in your day with product research, okay? So um, I may bore you, kind of bored you with that a little bit, but a lot of people have been asking me about that, so I wanted to do, um, elaborate uh, and, and let you know that you know you will find you will find a profitable product to sell on Amazon. You will. It will take a little bit of time. And what you'll do is when you get to this stage and you're like, oh man, it's not a great product. Um, go ahead and exit out, and you'll just kind of you'll kind of go back to. Um, well, you can go back to. Uh, well, I don't know what I just clicked on to new releases, you know, to Amazon and kind of backtrack if you want. You can look at, you can continue to look at this list here or you can go ahead and backtrack to, you know, go all the way back and look in a different category, you know, and you can have some kind of process. Maybe you start in, you know, the automotive category or the baby or beauty and personal care category and you kind of move through and look at a bunch of subcategories in that. If you don't find anything, then you move to the next category and so on and so on. Um, that's usually how I work. I'm very chronological and like methodical in my process. So that's what I do. And a lot of times I can, you know, within baby, within beauty and personal care, there are a number of products, whether that's in bestsellers, new releases, most wish for gift ideas that are great potential Amazon FBA products. Okay. So you're just going to take a little bit of time, but you just kind of repeat that process. And again, at least four sellers making $8,000 or more a month, at least, uh, you know, the average of the four, the top four sellers reviews are under a hundred and the average price point is $13 or more. Okay. And, um, another thing I want to show you, okay. Cause that's one strategy. There are literally infinite ways that you can do product research, especially with the, um, web at, or sorry, with the, um, with the viral launch Chrome extension it makes it very, very easy. Another thing that or uh, another very cool tip that you can do. Okay. So let's see if we can go, I want to see if we can go back. So we're going to go back to where we just were on that sellers page. And what we're going to do, okay, or to, to where we were with the, um, with viral launch. So let's go back to page two. So we're going to basically go back to this, uh, sellers storefront and we're going to look at the other products that they're selling. So think about this logically, right? If, if a particular company is doing, is selling really, really well with one product, let's say the product, you know, it's not, it's too competitive for us or it doesn't make enough revenue for us. But if a certain company is selling it really well and making good money from it, then there's a chance that um, they're also selling other products well. So I'm gonna show you a very cool technique. And this is what I talk about when I say you can ethically steal um, other Amazon sellers products. So uh, so we'll go back to the category. What was it? It was stone. It was like natural stone something. Let's, see. Let's go to natural stone. Yeah, there we go. Natural stone humidifier. Okay. We'll go to the one with like 400. There we go. Easy, easy comforts. Okay. So by easy comforts. So click on the product with like I just did the easy comforts home, uh, the room humidifiers, horrible title, by the way, two photos. Uh, it's, um, horrible listing, by the way, very, 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 very poor listing. Um, anyway, we are going to see how well they're doing overall. Okay. This person, in my opinion, does not know what they're doing in terms of Amazon marketing, in terms of they should have at least, you know, five to, you know, seven or more photos, at least five, um, a keyword dense title, um, you know, hypnotic, uh, persuasive bullet points, et cetera. And they're just not doing that. So, and I, I, I have a feeling like they're making a lot of money though. Okay. And this is, this is what I want to show you because, um, a lot of people talk about how, Oh, Amazon FBA can't succeed. Like, oh, I can't succeed. Like I'm telling you, you, and I don't even know who you are. I can almost guarantee, right? I bet that you are better or you can become better than most of, than the majority of Amazon sellers. And there are a lot of Amazon sellers literally making millions, like businesses making millions or at least hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in revenue by selling weird products. Okay. So what we're going to do is, um, you know, now we're in their storefront. Okay. And just to explain, Briefly, sorry, I know I was talking and, and as I was doing this, you click on the product listing, you go over to the right-hand side, click on their sold by, okay? So not, you, you will see it up here, buy easy comforts, don't click on that. Go over here to in stock, sold by Homestar products. And as you can see, the um, company name is different from their brand name, right? Their company name is Homestar products, very generic. 
And then they have their Easy Comforts Room Humidifier. I guess they branded it that way. So, so click on this. Sorry, I'm repeating my step again. But, um, and then click here to Homestar Product Storefront. We want to go to the storefront. And basically, now we're on the same page that we were before. Uh, so these are all the products that this company is selling, okay? And what we do is, let's assume that that one product that we looked at was selling really, really well. Well, odds are they're probably selling other products that are selling well. And as I'm scrolling through here, you know, this could be interesting, but it's under, you know, it's under 12 bucks and, and kind of, you know, generic. Money Tree could be interesting, but 127 reviews and, you know, it looks like they go for low, they, it looks like the majority of their products are under $12. So for in our case, and in my opinion, uh, it's not really worth going after, but I'm gonna show you something interesting here. Okay, so we're kind of scrolling through. And yeah, a lot of random, you know, magnesium uh, and Nightwatch infrared monocular for 250 bucks. Uh, so very interesting, wide range of products, right? So this is uh, an Amazon seller and very well could be an individual person, like a single person. This is an Amazon business, but you, know, you don't know how many you know, employees there are. If this is just one guy or a girl, or if there are multiple you know, employees, a lot of times there's just one person running this entire show. And um, let's just kind of look at the revenue numbers. So looking through the list um, of products, I don't really see anything that really caught my eye. Really, I, like the, some products that looked interesting had a lot of reviews, some were name brand, and this wasn't really the best, um, you know, the best storefront to look at. But um, I wanna show you something interesting here. So as you can see, right, they're sell one of their products is making $22,000 in revenue a month. Another product is making $29,000 in revenue a month. Another product is making $25,000 in revenue a month. And we also have four and three. You add up all of this, um, this seller, whether they're an individual or a company, is making pretty good money every single month by selling these weird, like look at Woody over here. Like Woody's raking in like, a pretty substantial, at least for us, right? In our standards, I would be very happy with $29,000 along with my 22 and my $25,000 a month. Uh, and this is what I'm ultimately building, my wife and I are building for in our own business. Um, like I said, this person went with horrible listing and not you know very good products or very good reviews or very good photos, et cetera, is doing very well on Amazon. So I just hope this is some inspiration to you because this is absolutely inspiration to me. And you're probably wondering, well, are, are these numbers correct? Um, for the most part, absolutely. This is definitely an estimate of revenue, so it could be wrong. But um, but oh, like it's not going to be like you know they're making twenty two thousand on. It looks like they're making twenty two thousand, but they're really making like a thousand or two thousand. It's going to be very close to twenty two thousand. Whether that's twenty thousand, twenty four thousand, um, it's going to be right around that range. And another note, and this will be true for you too, so pay attention. Uh, 20% of their products are generating 80% of their revenue, right? These three products are generating the majority of their uh, profit and their revenue. Well, I can at least say revenue. I don't, I don't know about profit, but I would assume so. Uh, and their other products, some are selling okay, like 8,000 down here, 5,000 down here, nah, not bad. Um, but, you know, not as great as the others. So that's gonna be the same with you, right? In, in your business as you launch on Amazon, 20% of your products are going to account for 80% of your revenue and your profit. Uh, the key is, honestly, this is this is the key to Amazon. There's a few keys, but use common sense, um, use paid tools, okay? Um, it's going to be worth it in the end. If you're skimpy, you're trying to spend as little as possible. Uh, what I'd recommend is if you just don't have the budget right now for all the Amazon expenses, is to use uh, use something like re or do something like retail arbitrage, where you buy items at clearance, whether that's online or in Target or in Best Buy or Walmart or wherever, and then resell it or flip it, you know, on Amazon or on eBay for more. Get a feel for online uh, selling, online marketing, and then and also build up, you know, a few thousand dollars to where you have the capital ready for Amazon FBA. Because like I said, it'll absolutely be worth it. But using those paid tools like you know like Viral Launch and others. Um, using your common sense, persistence, uh, and really, and this is the final point, and the real, the main point is just keep is just keep launching new products. Learn from your mistakes. Um, you know, hopefully, all your products that you launch on Amazon will be a success. Okay, and especially if you follow some of the tips that I've given you here and some of my other videos. You know, um, but keep launching products. Like you'll build your revenue and profit. It'll take a few months, right? It's not going to be immediate right away, but it will take some time and. It, you can literally like retire in like a couple years, right? If you're like, I'm 25 uh, or I'm sorry, I'm 24. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I'm getting old. 
uh, so I can't remember, but 24 and you know, currently generating a six figure passive income. And that number is, well, it's still six figures, but it's still, it's increasing at this point exponentially. It's a very powerful thing. And the key is to keep launching products on Amazon. Uh, make sure you, you know, you do your due diligence, do your research, not just throw up a random product. Um, but uh, those are the two methods I wanted to show you today. I know it's kind of uh, all over the place a little bit, but I hope this was helpful. That is the uh, storefront, how to ethically steal you know, products from other Amazon sellers like, um, like this person here, Homestar Products, which wasn't the great example, but hopefully you know how to use that now, as well as to look at the Amazon best sellers and new releases to find those new products that nobody else is looking at. These are very powerful. Like I said, I've generated tens of thousands of dollars in profit by using these strategies. Um, and like I said, I'm not gonna give you the fish. I'm gonna teach you how to fish. And hopefully now you know how to fish. Um, if you have any questions, which I'm sure you do, please leave them below in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can on those. If you did like this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up and hit subscribe below. Check out the other free videos that I have on this course that are extremely helpful, as well as the future videos that are soon, that are coming very soon on the course that I'm super excited to share. Um, like I said, I hope you found it helpful. I really appreciate you watching and I look forward to seeing you in future videos.